Hello and welcome to part two of my walkthrough of the ArcSight solution with regards to the console. Now, I will be touching on some of the other elements to do with, for example, the web console and so on. But I just wanted to pick on the uh, the, 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 the thick client to start with, simply because uh, there's so much more that we can do with this. Now, we initially talked about the uh, the panes and how you'd look at some of the data and the, the, the three types of underlying event, the base, the correlation, and the system. Now, the next uh, step that's usually asked for is, is how do we administer the system? How do we do something? How do we see what's going on? Uh, what I've got is some great view or some log data that's refreshing. That's fantastic. But what does it mean? What's going on with my underlying system? Now, What's important is, I mentioned before, all of these views, the dashboards, the uh, active channels and so on, can all be used to a, a look at the data for the system itself, which means that the system monitoring is actually very, very powerful and, and actually provides us with a huge amount of information. So where is it? Um, well, actually, I'm going to start with the dashboards and I'm going to walk through some examples on this one to start with. Uh, you'll find the dashboards under the administration part and we'll see it's all broken down. Now, Logger is more, these days, it's it's better managed within the ArcMC or ArcSight Management Center environment. So I'm not going to worry about that one. What I am going to worry about is these three sections here. So it's ESM itself, uh, the devices and the connectors that are feeding if I've got them under management within this particular configuration. In my setup and the most of the existing customers will be making use of the connectors directly feeding into ESM. So that's OK. I will touch on that. But let's start with ESM for a moment. So let's look at the dashboards that are available. There are a whole bunch available. Um, there's one specific around HA monitoring, which I don't have. Uh, but what we can start to see is, for example, who's using the system? Who are the active user sessions? So it's very, very easy for me then just to double click, open up that dashboard, and I can see the users logged in, uh, uh, notifications of what they've done uh, within the system as well, uh, and the access logs that's viewed there. These are just tables of the log data we can see. So we can see there's a, a, the ArcSight service itself and me as admin, and that's where I've logged in and our console at the time. So it's very simple and very straightforward user activity. Uh, we can also see that the system health itself, so we can see that broken down. Now, when it comes to the system health, there's three areas we need to be considerate of. There's the event and the event rates themselves, the resources of the system, and the storage, the back end, the database. I'm going to start with the storage side of things. So ESM makes use of what we call a core engine. Uh, and we can see that there's a, a, a couple of particular dashboards that we can view here. So uh, there's the performance database. So if I just open up that dashboard to, to view this, and let me give myself a little bit extra space, we can see there's again, there's a table that tells you how much uh, of the particular table spaces, how much is free. So you get an instant view of how much table space is available. We can see some of the side tables uh, they use now within the core system that you don't need to worry about those for the moment. Uh, what we can see is the uh, insert time and the retrieval time. Now these are uh, real time uh, event graphs that are specific for system events only. Uh, so we can see that there is a moving average that's jumped up dramatically. There's no scoring on this one because it's dynamic and it's relevant. But uh, in this particular example, we see the last 24 hours that there was no uh, no data, then suddenly there's data. And again, the same is true here. So we've seen that the, uh, the insert time to the database is dropping to some sort of more consistent average. And then finally, we can see some moving averages. And again, if there was a major problem with the database, we'd see all the spikes all over the place or a big jump in the values that are, are viewed. Typically, these values are shown in milliseconds. So we can understand the database and if there's any performance issues. So it's very easy and simple for me to get to that database and see the data that's going on. We can also look at uh, some more detailed information uh, with regards to the archive side of things. So if we've got configuration around the archiving, so we're exporting the data. Again, I don't actually have this as my configuration, but we can see the status there. So we can see the storage and what's going on there and whether we've got any spare space or whether we're running out or whether there's any performance issues there. Next, we can look at the resources that are available. So whether it be rules or reporting. Now, uh, reports, typically you'd run out of hours to schedule and make sure they're running a, a particular uh, sequence and not impacting anybody's using uh, using the system so we can see what's going on there. We can also see the rule status. Now, this starts to become very important. So actually, dig into that for a second. So now we've got a, a little bit more information. Now, again, just a little hint and tips of how we see this data. Now, I've got limited real estate to view this information. We can see all this data all over the place. But what I can do is if I just click on one of these particular uh, 
that fields elements here. Uh, I've got some options here about uh, what I want to do. I actually cl close it and have it removed from view. I can minimize it and make it difficult to view. What I can do is I can float it. I can click that and it actually comes out of the panel and I can see the data and much more information. So if I do have limited space, I can actually very quickly uh, view that and, and see what's going on. So I can see in this place, I can see recently fired rules. Now, remember what I said before, there's three types of events. Uh, there's the base, there's the correlation and the system as events. Whenever there's a rule fire, we'll get a system event that say a rule has fired. Whenever there's a problem, we'll get an event that says a system event that something has occurred as well. So we can see that all the recently fired rules, this again this is real time, so we can see what's going on, we can see the impact as well. And if we wanted to, we can actually just dig into those as well. We can actually right mouse click and do uh, you know, a drill down on the data as well. I'm not going to worry about it for the moment. What I can do is I can actually just dock that back in for a second. It puts it back exactly where it came from. And again, what I can do here is I can just undock this uh, to, to view the data and view the, the, the particular information. Now, this is a massive uh, panel. Let me just shrink it a little bit so we can see the bottom of this. Uh, there's lots and lots of information in here, lots and lots of data, uh, and we can see what we call partial matches. Now we're starting to dig into a little bit more detail around what the system is doing and how it's doing things. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this at this point because it becomes more important with regards to rule authoring, which I'll talk about later. But suffice to say, what this means is that a, a, a rule has been partially matched. Matched. Some events have partially matched this particular rule and it's keeping that and storing it in memory until we might receive some corresponding uh, events to actually finish doing that as well. So that's what a partial match rule is. So let me just dock that back in again. We can see the top firing rules. We can see uh, other information. We can also see the errors that have occurred. So for example, if you had a rule that was firing far too much, so statistically it then triggers a trigger within the, within the system to protect itself. Uh, it would actually then disable that rule, for example, to prevent it from dragging the system down and reducing system performance. So we can see an incredible amount of information around the rules, what's going on, the rules engine itself, and how we look at that data as well. So that's just the rule dashboard. And the same goes with the reporting. I'm not going to dig into it too much detail, but we can actually look at uh, the statistics within the reporting subsystem. My system's not set up to do a huge amount of reporting, so I'm actually not going to get a huge amount of data at this point. But what I can do is I can see what's currently running, uh, statistics of previously run reports, uh, and if there's any issues with that, uh, any any locked ones or anything like that, and, and the overall, overall moving average of what's occurring within that as well. So the whole point here is that we can actually view and get to this kind of data really, really simple, really, really straightforward, just using the standard views of the data that we'd normally see. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to touch on the events themselves so we can see uh, throughput and priorities and, and so on. Um, more importantly, we can dig into what's going on with particular uh, event sources as well. So we just look at the throughput brings up a nice little dashboard and this is uh, again just a, a standard dashboard it gives us the breakdown of the time and the average so it gives us the average line between this but it gives us the peaks of event volumes across those particular time periods as well so again if you just hover over them it'll give you the, the, the actual time that that was generated therefore the gap between the two we can see all the event, uh, systems that will generate these events themselves so we can see that there's the uh, I have got this um, a Nessus connector, we've got a demo connector that's feeding log data through. Um, we've got some other components as well, uh, as well as internal events that, so we can see the internal uh, manager itself, the, the, the actual event system itself internally, it's generating events as well. So we can see event rates, events per second average, events per second uh, across a uh, time period, uh, total number of events, events per day, and so on. Now, you can see that the number of events I'm generating is very, very low. So that's why I'm getting this this overall you know, minimum and maximum events per second, yet one, uh, effectively, at that point. Uh, and the maximum I was getting on the internal event system was 442. Now, the reason for that being so high, again, this is a demo environment, is because when I've uh, powered this on and, and, and shut down my virtual machine, there's a whole load of additional uh, data that needs to be flushed out of uh, trend tables and statistics. That's what's been generated there. So don't worry about that. You wouldn't normally expect to see very high disparity between the systems there. But more importantly, if you had uh, different connectors, you would see the events per second. So again, 
from a management and an administration point of view, uh, when somebody says, how do I can, how can I tell how many events per second I'm getting? You can actually view that information very quickly and very easily just by looking at this dashboard and see the data. Um, so that's the event side of things. There's an overall table that gives us overall system information if you wanted to look at that as well, which is kind of useful, but it's more of a summary uh, of the data there. Um, we can look at things like uh, event analy uh, analysis overview. We can look at uh, some of the information to do with configuration changes. So who's changed what within a system? Again, I reiterate what I mentioned before. Everything is an event, whether it's a system generated event, an external log entry or a correlation event, I can trigger anything. So if somebody made a change, I could have a rule trigger that that change has been made. If an event has been received and a case has been created, so that's both an external base event as well as an internal system event, I could then do a correlation or a dashboard or report even on that as well. So I've got a very powerful way of just viewing that data. So I'm not going to go into too much more detail around DSM. What I'm going to do is look at some of the uh, devices and connector information here as well. What does this give us as, as a view? So if we are feeding the data in directly from these smart connectors or connectors into ESM, there's actually a huge amount of data we can we can view. So we can we can look at this data. We can actually look at uh, devices that the system has identified as being unique, uh, and we can view that data. Uh, and that's all that this dashboard is going to do. It's going to view what it thinks is are are the unique devices as part of that. So if in this particular example, this is my test system. I'm actually feeding in replay data. So the system doesn't actually identify it as unique devices. But if I was feeding it directly, I would have all this information uh, where it can, defined by the uh, device vendor and the product, which gives us a unique combination of what's going on. So that gives us the ability to identify the devices. But what about the connectors themselves? So we can, we can look at the status. We can look at the event sources as well. So this is the useful one with regards to event sources uh, of what's, what am I seeing? So in this case, like I say, I'm just feeding through um, test data, some replay data. So we can see there's various combinations of information here. We can see there's all sorts of uh, different volumes. So my most uh, is coming from a checkpoint file one and my least is coming from a Cisco PIX. And it's just shown in the particular chart there. Um, what I can do is then actually show the connectors and cache status and actually show you all the connectors that I have, uh, what's their overall status, what's caching, what's not caching, what's flushed and so on. It'll give you the internal system events. Again, it's just an event. I can put it into a dashboard and that's all that dashboard is, is showing as part of that. So I only have one connector, which is my replay one, uh, and it doesn't cache and it's not doing anything in that part uh, with regards to that. Now, one thing I will mention, this is only when you are feeding events directly into ArcSight, uh, the ESM system itself, from a smart connector, which is what most customers do, uh, and and this involves uh, getting this data here. Now, what we would normally recommend, because the ability to do this device device status monitoring, it's an additional capability that you can turn on within content. So again, resources that we've got here within the ESM system uh, to give you some much more visibility of of the devices and what's going on. That content we are now recommending that you should be using uh, ArcMC or ArcSight Management Center to do that because it will give you much better information around that and it can track that. And more importantly, it doesn't put any additional load on the ESM system from a correlation point of view. So um, while there are information here around uh, connectors and sources and, and device status and so on, we would recommend that you use the ArcMC platform for doing that because it's going to give you much better information. So. I've quickly worked through uh, a couple of scenarios there with some uh, the simple dashboards where we can view what's going on uh, with regards to the system, the database, the events, uh, the rules engine, uh, and overall status of the information, as well as even digging down to some of the connectors as well. But don't forget, all the resources are available for all of this as well. So if we wanted to look at the active channels, uh, we can see those active channels. You can see that there are particular uh, active channels already set up for you to look at some of the events as they're received. So whether it be coming from connectors and system health information, whether it be coming from particular devices, whether it be the actual system health messages from ESM, we can actually look at the channel uh, around that as well. So I can actually just double click and open up the systems event channel uh, for the internal ESM system events. 
and there we go there's the uh, there's the events it's just uh, pulling those events down with regards to the last uh, hour of system events within ESM so there we go we got everything uh, with rule triggers and add to lists and updates and monitor events and so on so it's an incredibly powerful way of viewing that data uh, just in an active channel but the same goes with the rules as well so don't forget there are a bunch of rules that are running as resources within a system that are doing this as well so let me just expand uh, the, the, the particular setup for this so we look at the administration and we'll see there's a whole bunch of rules uh, that are used as part of the system to trigger activity within it as well. So from a systems administration point of view, uh, we actually have an awful lot. So we can look at system health and then storage. And then we can see there's a whole bunch of rules that are running that will be triggering in the background. So uh, and again, just for reference here, uh, what we can do is we'll be see the little lightning symbol. Again, remember this referred to a correlation. So that's, that's uh, consistent here. So these are correlation rules where it's grayed out. That means that that particular rule has been disabled. Uh, so it's very easy for them. I could just right mouse click on a particular rule. Uh, I can enable or disable it accordingly. That's why it's just showing me a different, uh, a different combination there so as you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff with regards to the administration that's actually built into the system that allows me to get to that data and if I wanted to create my own dashboards I can get to that information I can view that that, that, that uh, uh, dashboards or views or active channels or even rules to drive what I want to do uh, there's no uh, hidden elements with regards to how this operates it's there and it's available for me to use and display that data so that's a, uh, the, the second part in this very quick run through of the ArcSight console. Uh, and this particular element, I've touched on the system administration components that are available within this and how that's reflected uh, and viewed that within the, within the console itself, for example, like active channels uh, and dashboards specifically. So uh, that's enough for the moment. I'm actually going to come back and uh, in the next session, I'm going to be digging a little bit more into the active channels. So thank you very much.